Hey everyone, welcome back to Great Northwest Weaponry. Kind of fumbled the hammer on this on one, so I skipped a bullet, but today we are taking a look at the Nagant Revolver Model 1895. This one is dated 1944. Uh, this is a, a gun that is widely available, generally pretty uh, pretty inexpensive, and uh, you know, just kind of a cool, uh, cool Russian piece. You see these all over the place. Uh, you know, among collectors, pretty much everybody and their dog has one. They're not expensive and they're not hard to find, but they are cool. The Russians use these in both world wars. And, uh, yeah, just picked this up fairly recently from friends at the war front. We're going to go ahead and go into the uh, gun room and take a closer look at this and talk about some history. The history of the Nagant revolver is lengthy, to put it mildly. This gun saw service with the Russian Empire, Soviet Russia, and the Russian Federation, um, really not fully um, being decommissioned until 2009. Uh, well, we'll get a little more into that as we go along, but the gun was officially replaced by the, I think it's model 1952 Makarov, so that kind of gives you an idea. Um, the gun was originally designed by, uh, I believe his name is said Leon Nagant, it's either Leon or Leon, so, uh, and his brother Emil, but Leon Nagant was, uh, known in the, uh, in the courts of the, the Russian Empire for having helped design the Mosin Nagant M91, so he already had a reputation as a gun maker, um, and this gun, it's very unique. It features a gas seal, uh, and we're going to take a very close look here. If you watch the cylinder, when you get past the first click, it sinks up right in here. So we'll do that again for posterity. You may have seen it shift back, so watch close. Click, click. So that creates a seal so that the bullet uh, doesn't lose velocity when uh, when traveling out of the barrel. And uh, we actually have some uh, some original Russian cartridges here, so just to give a peek. And don't worry, I'm not firing original Russian cartridges. Uh, modern ammo for these is not hard to get. It's 762 Nagant is usually what you'll see it labeled as, but I believe the official designation is 762 by 38 millimeter rimmed, but. This right here is your original bullet. So the bullet is down inside there, and when the gun seals up, the brass goes inside the barrel just a little bit, creating a gas lock, of which uh, means that, uh, theoretically, this gun could be suppressed, which is very, very unique for a revolver. So it is an interesting design. Uh, it was actually said uh, by an Imperial Russian officer also, that uh, just, just before I get into the story, these guns are extremely sturdy. That is what they were known for, was how sturdy they are and how well they held up to really anything. But it was said by an Imperial Russian officer that, and I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but if anything went wrong with the Nagant, you could fix it with a hammer. <laughs> if anybody knows exactly who that quote can be attributed to, please let me know in the comments, but it's too good of a quote not to bring up. But as I said, these guns had an extremely long service life. Uh, maybe the first war that they were used in would have been the Boxer Rebellion, but they also saw use in the Russo-Japanese War, both world wars, as well as uh, the Russian Revolution. The Imperial uh, family of Russia, of Imperial Russia, was actually executed with Nagant revolvers. So, uh, and, and then after World War II, you still see them crop up throughout history in, in Korea, Vietnam, and as I'd mentioned, they weren't didn't really fully leave service until 2009 with uh, the uh, bailiff security forces, and I think it was 2003 for the postal security forces. So they may be the longest service life of any pistol that I own. Uh, I believe production ended at the end of World War II, but they were produced all the way through World War II, even though, as I'm uh, probably going to mention again at some point, they were intended to be replaced by the TT-33, but they weren't really fully replaced by the TT-33. They were still very plentiful in the field in World War II. Uh, these were also very common in the hands of uh, the uh, Bolshevik secret police and uh, really any secret police agencies that came after in Soviet Russia, including like the NKVD. Um, your, uh, during Stalin's purges, for instance, the 
most popular method of execution of prisoners or of enemies of the state was to take them out back and shoot them in the base of the head or the neck with one of these. So, kind of a grim side of the history there, but it definitely lends to uh, a kind of an interesting story with these. So, as I'd mentioned, um, Leon, or Leon Nagant, was who designed this gun, and he uh, brought the design back to Liège in Belgium, who produced the guns for Soviet Russia, but the the first few years, these guns were not produced in Russia. They're kind of known as, as the Russian revolver. Not designed by a Russian, designed by a Belgian, and not originally made in Russia, originally made in Belgium. Though in 1898, Russia did buy the rights to produce these and brought them to Tula Arsenal in Russia. Uh, this one is actually an Izhevsk, or Izhevsk, or however in the heck you're supposed to pronounce it, uh... Usually with the World War II models, you can indicate the manufacturer uh, right on the side. There'll be uh, a star for Tula and a triangle for Isafs. And we'll look a little closer at that when we when we do the tabletop, uh, look at how to remove the cylinder and such. But yeah, a very storied revolver, and they, they existed in a few different variations. For instance, for police, uh, usually you'd have a cut-down model uh, for easier concealment. Um, Early police models, uh, from what I've read, were double action, and early army models were single action only. But that, you know, changed as time went on. But no matter how you cut it, collectively, these were known all as the Nagant. Uh, the name of Leon Nagant being synonymous with the gun in whatever variation and whatever production it was. So... Yeah, it's it's an interesting piece with a long history. Uh, we've you know we've got an original holster. I, d I don't know the year on the holster. I don't believe it says anywhere. If it does on that stamp, it's not legible. But you know, original cleaning rod, just some some cool little goodies that came along with it. Uh, a lot of times you can find these with the holsters, and it's really not that expensive. But yeah very interesting piece. Let's go ahead and go to the tabletop view and take a look at how to remove the cylinder. So we'd already mentioned this marking here, this triangle being uh, Izhevsk. Um, normally that if this was Tula it would be a star and from what I've read this arrow means that this was army issue and with it being 1944 that's not surprising but I don't know that for absolute certain. I've uh, both heard and read that in the past but I can neither confirm nor deny. The serial number is usually over here, and this gun is matched. The cylinder is matched to the uh, to the frame, is matched to the barrel. For disassembly, uh, just to show you what we did there, turn this and pull out. Rotate, and you'll see these, these little hash marks. There's a pair of them here. There is also a pair uh, here. You want those lined up, and then now you see this, this little lug right there. That just pulls straight out. Now you're going to drop the gate and the cylinder pops out. This piece is spring loaded so to, to reinsert it you need to kind of guide that in first and depress it and then get it in place. Put this guy back in. Uh, let's see up there. Make sure it's all lined up and clicked in and boom back in place. And again just for a closer look for the cylinder sinking up. There you go. Uh, better close the gator, I can't really pull the trigger. Yeah. Interesting piece. And I'd mentioned uh, original Soviet marked box, or uh, Russian, I can't can't confirm for sure that these are Soviet, I cannot read this, but these are original Russian ammo boxes. So, got two of those. Original holsters we'd mentioned with cleaning rod, just a just a lot of goodness here. Let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at loading and firing this guy. Loading the Nagant revolver is nothing special, uh, very crude actually. So you've got a ramp on the side here. You open that. Uh, the I've got an original holster on my hip here, and you keep the ammo in these pouches. It's a seven shot gun as we've discussed. And let's see if I can get them all out at once or if it's going to fight me. I'll just grab a few at a time. Okay, so seven shots, 
one, rotate, one, rotate, and so on. Grab the last couple. Close the gate, and now it's either double or single action. Uh, the double action on this thing is really quite hideous. I've read that it's uh, generally in the vicinity of 15 pounds for the trigger pull, and I believe that. So let's go ahead and take this seven. We're going to start with a couple of uh, single actions. All right, double action. Okay, now to unload, open the gate back up, and you can usually just kind of push the bullets out or they'll just fall out on their own. Yeah. If you have any get stuck, you can click this, pull out and rotate, and then line them up and push them out. Just like so. And then click it back into place and it stays. So yeah, that is shooting the Nagant. Cool piece. Um, glad to have it. Like I say, it's nothing, nothing particularly special. Pretty easy gun to get your hands on, but a cool piece. And if you're into your World War One and World War Two guns, this was the most common sidearm amongst Russian soldiers in both World Wars. Uh, in World War One, it would have been more of a symbol of status to carry this. Uh, World War II, they were very plentiful. Uh, they were intended to be replaced with the Takarev TT-33, I think it is, but uh, they still outnumber the TT-33 significantly in the field. That gun was uh, still kind of the newfangled thing in World War II. So, yeah. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this video. It's been Thomas with Great Northwest Weaponry, and I'll see you next time.